President Vladimir Putin escalating the situation, putting his nuclear deterrent forces on emergency alert. This is nations around the world continue to hit Russia's economy hard with sanctions and other measures. The European Union not allowing Russian aircraft to enter its airspace. And multiple countries have disconnected Russian banks from SWIFT, which is the international banking system. Well, this morning we're joined by Dr. Thomas Porter, who's a professor of Russian and modern European history at North Carolina A&T. Good morning, sir. Good morning. So right now, as we understand, peace talks of a sort have, have begun or are underway. How much stock do you place in that? I mean, what is this something that's actually going to stop the fighting over there, or is it kind of just a, a delay tactic? I doubt it. I think it's a delay tactic. Mm -hmm. uh, the Russians are sending their minister of culture to conduct these negotiations. It's a very low-level official. Mm -hmm. And I think really it's just to buy time to resupply their forces because the, you know, the Ukrainians have put up a much stiffer resistance than was originally thought. And they, they basically need to resupply their units before they continue their advance. There's certainly a military battle going on. There's a financial one as well. We just mentioned the central bank there. How much force does that have? The Russian economy right now is pretty much in shambles, isn't it? Yes, it is. And it actually has been in shambles since 2014. So Putin's been you know, stockpiling uh, foreign currency at $630 billion in foreign currencies. But we've hit the uh, Russian central bank now where they can't actually access that. So I think that that you know, measure is really quite important because he was planning on using that and the cryptocurrency they have to you know, finance the next couple of years of sanctions. Now, of course, they're also trading with, with the Chinese. And, you know, the Chinese are buying from the Russians, but they're not accepting rubles, which now are, le you know, a ruble, which is their dollar, mm -hmm. is worth less than a penny right now. So basically worthless on the international It's situation. worthless, yes. So the United States has certainly been involved in this. What other countries, though, are making a, a, a concerted effort to try to put some pressure on Russia at this point? Well, Germany has really met the moment. Mm -hmm. I mean, at the outset of hostilities, they... Uh, ended the certification process for the Nord Stream 2 pipeline. And really, I thought that was all they could do because they have a historical responsibility, you know, considering that they, you know, launched a, an assault on the Soviet Union and killed 25 million Soviet citizens. They were loath to provide weapons to the Ukrainians, but now they've done that as well. And they're also adding 100 billion euros, which is 120, well, maybe 115 uh, billion U.S. dollars uh, to their defense budget, which is a huge amount. And they're also building two liquefied natural gas terminals in order to import liquid natural gas and not be dependent on the Russians. So the Germans have really stepped up. Other nations, though, also have a stake in this. And we were talking earlier, you mentioned some Scandinavian countries here as well. What's, what's their stake or what's their force, at least as far as pushing back on the Russians? Well, the, the, the Finns and the Swedes have both uh, begun discussions about joining NATO. Mm -hmm. And again, this is you know, exactly the opposite of what Putin intended. He thought that the West was weak and divided and wouldn't stand together against his attack on Ukraine. Instead, he's found a united world against Russia. And of course, the, the uh, troop movements and positionings that the United States has undertaken since and other countries and the supplies sent to the Ukrainians, we're sending more Stinger missiles in. But Sweden and Finland are now asking to join NATO. And the Russians have threatened them uh, this weekend. Uh, with military repercussions if, in fact, they do so. And the Finns, you know, they're not going to back down. So he's done the exact opposite. He's actually made NATO stronger, united, and adding members. And even Kosovo is asking now to go into NATO. With that, have we seen any sort of, of flinch in, in, in any way from, from Putin at this point, though? As you know, we're, we're hearing about long lines of military, you know, miles long military traffic heading into the area. Is there any sort of slowdown on, on his end? No, there's none. Yeah. Uh, he's obsessed with this uh, notion that Ukraine is not a legitimate country. It's part of Russia. And he sees himself as uh, the gatherer of the Russian lands, which is what they used to call about Ivan the Dread or Ivan Grozny, as people mm -hmm. know him, uh, Ivan the Terrible. Yeah. And uh, he has this historical mission in mind. And I'm afraid he's isolated and surrounded with people that won't say no. And I'm, I'm really quite concerned with this, uh, you know, a step in uh, escalating the tensions with the nuclear deterrent and all that kind of thing. Uh, he's a bit emotional, which I think is a result of his isolation during COVID. And, and at this point, the U.S. has had no response to that, that as far as the putting his, his nuclear forces on alert. We haven't responded to that at this point. No, we're not going to. Yeah. We don't need to. I mean, we, we're ready at any moment if need be. Uh, but this is just typical Putin. Uh, you know, beating his chest and, and making threats. He's a bully. Mm -hmm. And, and, and he, you know, he's been called on that 
And I don't see any uh, good end for this. Uh, the Russian people, of course, there's 6,000 of them already in jail for demonstrating, and that takes true civic courage. I mean, we demonstrate here in the United States for social injustice or whatever, but we know in the back of our minds, we're not going to jail for it. We're not going to get shot for it. Uh, we're not going to be beaten for it. But in, in Russia, that is a very real you know, probability for these demonstrators. So it's, it's amazing civic courage. Certainly. Thank you so much. We appreciate your time. We appreciate your insight. Thank you very much. You're welcome.